This video is about the four reusable components to create first in your React Native project. I'm going to show you the components and run it through the steps that you can follow to create each one of them. There will be a bonus tip if you reach the end of the video. I'll be demonstrating with the project I created using Expo, but it should work as well if you didn't use Expo for yours. Also for styling, I'll make use of styled components. The first component we need is a container component. So in my fresh React Native project, I'll create a directory for components and under it, another one for containers. Containers because we might have more than one container in our project. Our first container will be called main container. Just like any React component, we'll bring in React and create a function for the container. We'll then export it as the default for the file. Next, we bring in the native version of styled component. Using this, we create a styled view based on the view component. We style it by giving it a flex property of 1 so that it takes the full size of the screen and a padding of 25 pixels. For the top, we need more padding so we increase the value to 40 pixels. Also, we will give it a background color of our choice. For this, I have a colors file which has all my colors in an object. So from this, I will import my black color and use it. After that, I return the styled view in the container function. Now what makes a component reusable is the ability to accept properties and adapt based on them. So in the function parameters, we receive props. Based on the props, we will set the children property as the content of the styled view component. So when the component is used, any child that is passed to it will be taken in by the styled view we have over here. Also, to handle other properties such as additional styles which may be passed, we will spread the whole props argument as a property to the styled view. This container can then be used to wrap content in the app file or in any other component which will need the container to wrap its content. The second component is a set of text components. So under components, we will create a directory for text. We usually need differently sized text for different sections of our application. So we'll generalize this into three categories, a small text, a regular text, and a big text. Starting with the small text, we'll set up a function component just as we did for the container. Using the styled component, we create a styled text. we set a small font size for it, a color, and align it to the left. You can center it if you want, but I just like my small text on the left. Now in the function, we return the text and make use of the props just as we did earlier. Moving to the regular text, we can copy and paste the small text and change the component name. The only difference here will be the font size and the text alignment. Note that if you want to make use of custom fonts, you apply them in these files. For the big text, it will be very similar to the regular text with the only difference being the font size. With our set of text components created, we can confidently display text anywhere we want without worrying about having a consistent size and style since it has been handled already. The next set of components will be text inputs. So under components, we will create a directory for text inputs. We will start with one input component which we will call style text input. In this file, we will set up a basic function component. This component will encompass everything about our input field including labels and icons. To be able to monitor the progress, Let's use the component in our app file and pass a few properties. A few notable ones are the label, placeholder properties, and the state values for the particular input. The actual state will be the value, and the set function will be passed to the unchanged text property. Also, we will use the icon value to fetch a vector icon to be displayed. Back in the custom component, we will use the styled components to create an input field component based on text input. We'll give it some properties to style it to our preference. Now because of the label and other properties expected, we import a regular view from React Native and wrap it with it. Now in the function parameters, we'll destructure the label, icon, and spread the remaining props. We'll then spread the props once again on the input field. To display our label, we bring in our small text components and pass it the label. To display the icon, we'll style a view which we'll call left icon. We position it to be absolute so that I can go over the input field, adjust the top and left properties, and give it a Z index value so that it always stays on top. Now we bring in an icon package of our choice. 
Using the icon package in the left icon, we pass the icon property as the name and give it a size and a color. The text input is now ready to be used wherever it is needed. The fourth component on our list is a set of buttons. So under components, we create a buttons directory. We will start with one button which will be a regular button. In this file, we will create a function component for the button. Using styled components and our colors, we will style the button view to our liking. But in this case, it will be a touchable opacity instead. We will then return the view in the function component. Taking in the props parameter, we will expect an unpressed property. So we pass the unpressed property from it to the unpressed property of the view. After that, we will spread the whole props on the view. For the text in the button, we will bring in our regular text. We use the regular text in the button view and pass the children from the props as a value. We also spread the props on it. Spreading the props on both the view and the text will ensure that through the style property, we can further style our view or text appropriately. We can then import and use the button anywhere we want and it will be displayed. Now here is a bonus tip. Going back to the text input, if we need one for a password field, we can make a few adjustments to control the visibility of the password value. We need an additional state to know whether to hide the value or not. This will be true by default. We will then pass the value to secure text entry and pass the value itself and its set function to the component. Also, we pass a boolean property its password to tell the component that it's a password field. Now in the style text input, we discharge the additional properties. Based on this, we can display an eye icon on the right for toggling the visibility. To do this, we duplicate the left icon view and update the name to right icon. This will be a touchable opacity instead of view and we will change the left property on it to right. Now below the input field, if the password is true, we return the right icon component. For the unpressed property, we will pass a function to call the set hide password method. This will take the hide password value and negate it. In the component, we make use of an icon pack of our choice for the eye. For the name, we toggle the value based on the hide password value to change the eye to be opened or closed. We will then set the size and the color of it. With that in place, we should be able to enter password values and view them when we want to. Now, creating reusable components is one of the four tips for developing React Native apps faster from scratch, which were covered in the video on your screen now, so you can check that out for the other tips. Also, to know how to prevent your keyboard from covering your text input fields, this other video here will help you out. The source code from the video will be available in the description below the like button. And I'll give a special thanks to my patrons.